Um, Madam Secretary, let me make sure because um, Ms. Alvarez indicated she had uh, put in a request to speak, um, and you gave me a paper with the, her name. So everything is in order for? Through the chair, yes. Okay, Ms. Alvarez. Well, actually, please. before you start uh, running my time, I do want to request. I haven't asked sorry your time, so. Yeah. I want to request 10 minutes, please. Well, Only because I have nine teachers who would have liked to have been here, but as Ms. Alvarez pointed out earlier, they're at open house. So I think... Well, I think I need, that, a vote. I need a vote for that. Mr. Harvey, I need a vote for that. Yes, Madam Chair. The policy permits a speaker who signed up at public hearing to speak for three minutes to exceed that amount that would require a vote of the board. Well, and the maximum is 10 minutes. Uh, Ms. Alvarez indicated that she has letters from teachers, but still the teachers are not here for obvious reason, as she explained. If yes. they were here, but, but any, anyway, I'm going to ask for a vote. So through the chair, for her to exceed the three minutes, that will require a vote, vote on yeah. the board, yes. So if the board would like to do that? No. All those in favor say aye. Opposed and nay. Ms. Alvarez. And before you start, I do have another um, question that maybe I think should be addressed. Last time I was here, I, I mentioned a name and you told me that I was precluded from mentioning names. Right, and you still are. Oh, why is that, if I may ask? If this is, in fact, a public hearing, I should have the right Mr. to address specifics. Yes, through the chair, the, uh, the quorum policy of the board uh, prohibits the use of names. Um, you can speak uh, generally about persons. Uh, you can address the assembly as a whole, but specific names. So why the restriction on freedom of speech? Mentioning names. This is a public forum. I believe that I do have a First Amendment right. Yes. Uh, just through the chair, I mean, yeah. would you like for me to respond? Yes, I think you're the attorney and the yes. parliamentarian, and I would really would expect yes. you to respond. Yes, through the chair, uh, the decorum rules have been what they are for, for quite some time. Um, it is typical on, in legislative assemblies like this to have rules where um, names and addressing people directly by name is prohibited. <laughs> However, addressing the assembly as a whole or addressing individuals through their title and so forth is, is certainly permitted. And that would not inhibit your speech in any way. It, it's a time, place, and manner uh, restriction. So. So I could mention representatives' names, for instance. Would I be able to do that? Yes. Uh, well, through the chair. I mean, I, I don't know what the content of your speech is. Um, well, I'm I, just saying. I mean, I I don't see why a restriction on speech for names. This is a public hearing. This is government. And if I do want to mention a government name, somebody who is who should be accountable for their actions, I do think that that is a very unreasonable restriction on my First Amendment right. And I do believe that the U.S. Constitution trumps decorum. <laughs> so, why don't you start yeah. so Well, I just, I just want to know what the boundaries are. And last time, I, I yes. you know, yes. I gave way to you, but then I left your thinking, and I was scratching my head, and I'm like, that just, didn't, it doesn't seem to I understand, make sense. Have and I'm, you, you know, I'm very right passionate. And I, I, I don't want to entail freedom of speech. Are we going to, we just voted for 10 minutes? Yes, and I, I, I am grateful. I would have liked to have known I was going to, in fact, get for 10 minutes. I would have sure. prepared for a 10 minute speech. But I will fill in from things that have been said today um, at this meeting. Okay. So I'm ready to start. So then the clock can start now. Yeah. Okay, great. I don't see 10 minutes, though. Don't worry about it. I tell you that it will be 10 minutes. You have to trust the work. If it's ten minutes, it's ten minutes. Trust. I like that word. Okay, thank you. And by the way, thank you for giving me the ten minutes. I do appreciate it. As I did start last time, I'm going to start again with one of my favorite quotes. In a time of universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. George Orwell. I will address two main issues today, which do have legal ramifications. One of them is class size, and the other one is salaries. Constitutional violations class size. In violation of the Florida Constitution, many teachers have more students than legally allowed in classrooms. How can there be funds for wasteful spending, yet there is never enough for human capital? Teachers. What is wasteful, you may ask? 
A few years ago, all the books in my school, which were less than five years old, because that's approximately how old my school was, were dumped and replaced with almost identical books. The difference between the old and new books is that the new books say Common Core. That's it. Table of contents, identical. This is an egregious waste of taxpayer dollars. Parents, are you listening? Miami-Dade County Public School buys electronic tablets for your child, but stuffs them like sardines into classes, minimizing the individual attention they actually get from human teachers. If the fire marshal walked into schools, they'd be alarmed at how many safety violations there are. Notice that students' welfare is not being adequately provided for by Miami-Dade County Public School Board on multiple levels. Potential lawsuit? Maybe. So, there is accountability for teacher performance, but none for Miami-Dade County Public School Board, and just to throw in the Tallahassee blame game, and their inability to implement the Florida Constitutional Amendment on class size. I thought this was a country of laws, not a banana republic. In the interest of the Miami-Dade County Public School Board, if the interests, sorry, of the Miami-Dade County Public School Board were truly students, the class size amendment would be respected. After all, that is what Florida voters voted for. But yes, we do have Wi-Fi on buses, and, right, I didn't see any, any research today, nor in the recent past, indicating a correlation between too large a class size and lack of learning in the classroom. But I am sure that if we did just a tad bit of research, and I know you have many administrative assistants here making probably six-digit salaries, they would be able to locate much data stating that there is a very big correlation between class size and student learning. Now, let's move on. Statutory violations, salaries. You cannot contract out of something that is required by law. And I'm sure your attorney here will be more than happy to tell you that you cannot, and I'm going to stress, contract out of something that is legally required. Okay? It's not possible. It is irrelevant that teachers, many of them ignorant of the Florida statutory requirements, allegedly, emphasis added, voted yes on the contract. Florida statute provides that district school boards shall adopt a grandfathered salary schedule for paying all school employees hired before July 1st, 2014, and that teachers on a professional service contract may opt into the performance salary schedule if the teacher agrees to be on annual contract. The contract that was, and again, allegedly voted into being, does not honor the grandfathered pay scale, which was adopted in October 2013. And there's stuff on the internet, media, uh, alluding to that, I mean, it's, it, it documents it. You need to be live when it stated that, and I quote, if we maintain the step schedule, we would be out of compliance with the law, because in fact, it is the opposite, which is true. The strategies employed to conquer and divide teachers are repulsive, not to mention inequitable. The Herald recently pointed out, and not in today's article, but the one that was uh, published, I believe, at the end of August, the Herald recently pointed out that Miami-Dade County Public School employees were getting salary increases. Notice how the word raises was not employed. That is because all teachers will get a percentage increase, but yet, for the majority of the teachers, that increase will not represent a raise since the percentage increase does not even break even with inflation. What is the result? Most teachers are, in fact, getting a pay cut. Again, yes pay cuts. That is what we get for all of the SAT, AACT, all of that wonderful stuff, all the banners, right? Dog and pony shows. Yes, we get pay cuts. And mind you, I do want to uh, emphasize that MAS did, they all voted no for this contract. So those stellar teachers who are getting these stellar results voted no for the contract because they can do the math. So, what is the purpose of UTD if they truly, if they do not truly protect their members and instead deceive teachers by telling them that there is, there is not enough money when in fact there is? It's a rhetorical question, I know. There is no point. And besides, UTD blames everything on Tallahassee, right? Which begs the question, why have a school board, right? If nothing rests with anything local, be it the school board or the union, 
why not free up all these funds and pay the backbone of the school system? Now, another lawsuit, statutory violations, perhaps. Now, um, earlier, or not earlier this week, I should say last week, I did email Mr. Carvalho, Luis Diaz, and Sally Alion, and I want to thank you for failing to answer my email um, dated September 2nd, wherein I attached a letter dated September 2nd. Okay, um, now, I was a little bit surprised that my letter went unanswered because one time when I did come to the school board, I was told by Mr. Carvalho that I could email him. But I did. I do remember telling him, even though the mic didn't catch it, that I that I told him I did not. Yes, I'm sorry. I don't want to interrupt you. But remember what the attorney indicated that no names were prepared. Yes. Superintendent. Um, superintendent. superintendent. Okay, superintendent. Yes, that's always a risk because I know a lady got you know smashed for having. Oh, that's fine. We will take the risk. In any event, so yes, yes, he was supposed to email me back, but he didn't, and one time he did invite me to email with him, and I did decline, because I, I guess I kind of predicted that that would be the end result. As for Mr. Diaz and Ms. Sally Allion, they never contacted me. However, they did call me back in April of 2015, when I was going to be present at the school board meeting that time, to see if there was anything they could do to help me. Mind you, they did contact other teachers who were intimidated by these phone calls and they opted to not come to the school board. And I do want to say that there are many teachers, many teachers who have very low morale, okay? Um, they're disgusted and repulsed with this new contract and the tallies that we have been making and keeping of the schools um, that obviously voted have the no's have far outweighed the yeses. So where UTD is getting their data surprises me. But there, there is a lawsuit, right, about the previous election, if I'm not mistaken, and it took four years for them to be able to get uh, the ballots and all that stuff. So perhaps I guess they think that they're buying time. But I would love, I would really love to be able to audit this contract vote. Why? Because again, I do not know a single teacher who would have ever voted yes, or who even said she was voting yes. Everybody that I know and that I've spoken to and that my colleagues have spoken to have said that in fact they were voting no. So we have major suspicions. And again, you talk about all the accolades, you talk about all the wonderful stuff, but if you guys really went out to the trenches, right? And I'm not talking about the stuff that you guys put on your newsletters, which is all smiley and lovey-dovey and warm and fuzzy. It's not really all that. I know you want it to make it look like it's that way, and you know what? If I'd be on the other side, I would probably be wanting to make it look like that as well. But the truth is, that's not what it's like. Take a visit to my school. Talk to the teachers. Where when I was trying to tell them to vote no, they were like, Miss Alvarez, you don't have to tell us to vote no. We're gonna vote no, because we know that this contract is not good for us. And even today, one of them said, you look so pretty. I don't normally go dressed like this to work. Where are you going, she said. I said, I'm going to the school board. Waves her hands up. Miss Alvarez, what for? They don't listen. <laughs> you know that, okay? And um, really, this is what it's like. Perhaps I'm gonna get these looks and, oh wow, this lady, you know, she's so negative. But please, don't mistake me for being negative. It's not me who's negative. It's the sentiment of the teachers which is negative. And it's a reflection of the way, the negative way. And there's a nice chart on a blog called Miami Educator, which will show you just how negative it is. And it's even highlighted in red, which shows the effect that we're actually getting pay cuts. Because when the standard of living, or I should say the cost of living, is going up 2.4%, or 3%, but you're giving someone a 1.6% increase, again, I want to stress, teachers are getting pay cuts. And I don't know why it's the job of the school board to cut the millage and to not uh, assess more taxes to be able to cover the expenses, such as teacher expenses. Ma'am, your 10 minutes are up. So my 10 minutes are up. Yes. Okay, my 10 minutes are up. I guess I'm gonna have to come back. And by the way, breakfasts are extremely unhealthy. They're full of fructose. And fructose, the breakfasts. I wrote an article on that. The students throw out the breakfasts. 
but yeah, again, the banners. I love the banners, okay? You must, you guys must have stocks in the banner companies, okay? Because they all say healthy. But I can tell you, I do cafeteria duty. The breakfasts, parents, they are so unhealthy. I know, just so many things. And, and teachers hate technology in the classroom. It's, it's a big time killer. Really, you guys really should go really visit the classes. Thank you. I'm, I'm sure we will. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Disaster. Thank you very much, Ms. Alvarez. Um, Sad. I think it's 6.05. Um, yes. I want to say something. If not, 